ruin has come to our family. You remember our venerable house? Opulent and imperial, gazing proudly from its stoic perch above the moor. I lived all my years in that ancient, rumor-shadowed manor, fattened by decadence and luxury. And yet I began to tire of conventional extravagance. Singular unsettling tales suggested the mansion itself was a gateway to some fabulous and unnameable power. With relic and ritual, I bent every effort towards the excavation and recovery of those long-buried secrets, exhausting what remained of our family fortune on swarthy workmen and sturdy shovels. At last, in the salt-soaked crags beneath the lowest foundations, we unearthed that damnable portal of antediluvian evil. Our every step unsettled the ancient earth. But we were in a realm of death and madness. In the end, I alone fled laughing and wailing through those blackened arcades of antiquity. Until consciousness failed me. You remember our venerable house. Opulent and imperial. It is a festering abomination. I beg you, return home, claim your birthright, and deliver our family from the ravenous clutching shadows of the darkest dungeon. Hello, my name is Abe. Welcome back to the darkest dungeon. Now, before we begin, a couple things. Yes, I've played darkest dungeon before, I have a couple of playlists of Darkest Dungeon up on YouTube. This will be number three. But I have purchased and installed and downloaded the Shieldbreaker DLC and the Color of Madness. So it's a good excuse to come back to Darkest Dungeon and play a little bit more of it because, I've, you know, this game has been on my mind recently. I kind of want to play some more of it. And why not play it in a setting where you all can enjoy it as well? Now, I, I think I'm going to play it on Blood Moon. I, I did last time. I was tempted to do a torchless run of Blood Moon. The testing runs ended very poorly, so I feel like, especially with new DLC, I'm just gonna play it on Blood Moon and we'll go from there. I was tempted to do like a, a torchless darkest run, but even that is is very finicky, at least on the starting weeks. So I'm just gonna play it on, normally on Blood Moon, probably high torch for the most part. Second thing, well, I mean, that's already like four things, but fifth thing, uh, Darkest Dungeon 2, uh, 2 has been not re not announced, but there is going to be an early access period for it coming up at some point mid-2021. I don't know if I'm going to play it. I might just wait for the, the actual full release at some point in 2022. That way I can just kind of get the full experience from the beginning. That's that's kind of what I, I would like to do, I think. Um, so all that out of the way, I think we're ready to begin Darkest Dungeon. I have all the DLCs, I believe, installed and ready to go here. Butcher Circus, Musketeer, Crimson Court, Districts, Flagellant, Shieldbreaker. Also contains several new monsters, probably the snakes. And the color of madness. Start campaign. And we're going to start the campaign on Blood Moon, which is the highest difficulty minus, you know, stuff that you can do personally, like take out the torches and whatnot. And for the, the estate manor title, this will be the... A state of the damned. Because, I don't know, why not? It sounds good. Okay, let's do it. Cutscene time. You will arrive along the old road. 
It winds with a troubling serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside, leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient pitted cobbles of the old road, and on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Oh, the old ghost, how do I hate you? I think I'll actually use the ghost, but we'll, we'll make that decision when we get there. Um. So if you've never seen Darkest Dungeon, if you've never played Darkest Dungeon, first of all, check out my other uh, playlists of this game up on YouTube. However, I will go through the basics of the game. It is a essentially turn-based tactical strategy game. We have a group of party members and we're faced up against monsters that we have to try to take out while surviving and managing the stress of our units. The for some reason, the tutorial loading is always the one that takes the longest. I don't know why there's nothing here that actually needs to be tutorial like loaded. It should already be loaded because we had a cutscene. I don't know why it takes so long to load. <laughs> but we have party members on the left side of the screen. Enemy units will appear on the right side of the screen. We manage abilities, the placement of our party members in, in a line, and we have to just try to survive. Every single mission in the Darkest Dungeon features connected rooms and hallways that you have to explore to try to complete an objective, which is usually just explore enough of the place. The whole reason for that is that we are coming back to the manor on the hill and we're trying to map out the place, clear passages, explore, take out bandits and whatnot. We always have something that we're, we're working towards. Right now we have Reynald the Crusader and Dismas the Highwayman. Dismas has a gun. He's a bit more of a ranged character. Reynald here has a big giant sword. He just likes to hit things. For now, we're just gonna go to the next room. Brigands have run up these lanes. Keep to the side path. The hamlet is just ahead. Thank you, Wayne June. And we're going to explore this little area here. We're on our way to the hamlet, but our our cart crashed. We are we technically we are the person who the ancestor was writing the letter to. We are the, the person who was like, come back and take over the house. These guys are escorting us, I believe. An ambush. Send these vermin a message. The rightful owner has returned, and their kind is no longer welcome. It's a brigand cutthroat. He has 15 HP, 15% 15 protection, two dodge, three speed, and a bunch of resistances to various things. Because we surprised him, surprise is a random, random thing that can happen to either our heroes or the enemy units. Because we surprised him, we get to move first before he does. So we have Dismas in the back, who has Open Vein, which is a, a, a melee attack that bleeds the target, which is a damage over time. Pistol Shot, which can be a ranged shot. Grape Shot, which hits three enemy targets, you can kind of see underneath each one of these icons down here, the enemies that can be hit. And then on Grape Shot Blast, it's connected three dots. And Tracking Shot, which is like a, a self buff. You'll notice that for Pistol Shot, Pistol Shot, we can't use it because in order to use it, we have to be in the back three positions, which we are, but the enemy has to not be in the front, which they are. So we can't use Pistol Shot, but we can use Open Vein at the very least. So we're gonna use Open Vein, which has all of those different modifiers on it. It'll apply a, a debuff to the target as well. We're gonna hit him. We had like a 93% chance of hitting him. He resisted the bleed, but he still got hit for quite a bit. And now we have Reynald, who just, all of his abilities are just hit from the front. So if we want, we can smite him which just does damage. Zealous Accusation hits two enemies for low damage. Stunning Blow is a stun. 
and Bulwark of Faith is a protection for the Crusader. Honestly, we can see that we could do six to, a, six to 12 damage, which could kill him if we got lucky. Or we could stun him and then take another turn. And if we take another turn, we might be more likely to get the kill. So I'm gonna go for the stun. It does six damage, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, he resisted the stun, but in theory, if, if he didn't, we could have stunned him and then rolled over to the next turn and then hit him again. But instead, we're just gonna kill him. Destroy, Destroy them all. all. And then we move forward here. It's the Transcendent Terror. The Transcendent Terror, I'm gonna use my food here to heal up slightly, uh, is what you get on the Blood Moon difficulty. Normally, this is a tent where you get some, some gold, which is just loot that you get at after every sort of encounter. Uh, the Transcendent Terror will make one of our units hit maximum stress. Now, not only do you have to worry about your unit's health, you also have to worry about your unit's stress. As the stress goes up, when it hits 100, your units will have a mental breakdown and get an affliction like selfish or masochistic or cowardly or whatever, which will negatively affect them in combat. Uh, if you talk to the ghost, you get 100 stress. It's basically just a way of being like, yeah, sure, let's be a little bit, let's add some hard mode-ness to this run because we're gonna have a unit with affliction. So let's do it. So Dismas is now irrational. Reeling, gasping, <laughs> taken over the edge into madness. It's, it's really just a way to just add a little bit of a difficulty spike to the early game and make things just a little bit more harder, which I'm perfectly a fan of. A little bit of a story here, though, is that when I was testing Torchless runs, I was testing Torchless runs, and Dismas actually managed to get a virtue from this, which was a, a positive benefit instead of a negative benefit, but he still died on the, the upcoming fight here, which was uh, a little annoying. But we have Dismas. He's now afflicted. Dispatch this thug in brutal fashion, that all may hear of your arrival. So in theory, there's some negative stats associated with that, like his damage is down 10%, his dodge is down 5, uh, his speed is higher, actually, because of the affliction, which is very, uh, very interesting. His accuracy is also a little bit lower. I didn't, I didn't expect him to get faster as a result, that's kind of cool. Uh, but we have two enemies that we have to fight here, a Fusilier, which has a gun, and a Bloodlighter, who just has a big giant whip. Uh, I'm gonna try to go for the Whip Man first. Because if we can take him out, this guy will move forward and his gun's not gonna be that helpful. Good crit. When you crit enemies, your stress will go down, because your, your units are obviously excited to have that crit happen. When they get crit, their stress will go up. <laughs> As you've just, this guy always crits. He always crits on turn one. I hate him so much, but we're still gonna bleed him. He's bleeding pretty nicely. Blanket fire from the Fusilier in the back is, is highly annoying, but it, honestly not that bad. And uh, in theory, especially if we stun him, we might be able to kill him, but honestly, yeah, I'm just gonna hit him. Enemies leave behind corpses when you kill them. It prevents you from just immediately getting access to the units in the back. Did you know I'm immortal? Come, see for yourself. Marked, uh, it doesn't really do that much. Yeah, the um, the corpses are very annoying because you have to punch your way through the corpses in order to hit the units in the back behind the corpses. So we, we gotta chop through the large corpse here in order to bring this guy up to the front. Now that he's up at the front, we can we can kill him, and he only has access to a rushed shot instead of his AOE attack. Down the rabbit hole, Alice! <laughs> oh, thank you. You moved into the correct position. So he's bleeding. Two points of damage around for three rounds. Reynolds is gonna smack him. He's almost dead, not quite. But, oh, we, he, we missed. I guess we do have a little bit of low accuracy, unfortunately. But this guy, he's not gonna do too much more at this point. He's, he's dead. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Dun, 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 dun. We get some loot, which is very nice. I guess we should have, like, snuffed our torch right before the loot happened. And then we also get 
I mean, we can talk about the torchlight, but we'll do that later. Uh, and then we also have this uh, this chest here. Can be found in the most Bandits trapped chest. Something doesn't look quite right with this one. Open it. It's trapped. I mean, it did say it was a trapped chest, so. Oh, and then he stressed me out for being a, for getting a trapped chest. Lovely. Thanks. Thanks, Dismas. You're the best. We get some money, some heirlooms. Heirlooms are used to upgrade the the hamlet, the town next to the manor on the hill. And the treasure is used to upgrade all of our units with things. We leveled up because we did a mission. And every time you finish a mission or retreat or whatnot, your units gain quirks, which are positive or negative uh, effects on them. So Reynald, our crusader, picked up Automatonophobia, plus 20% stress damage versus humans, that's a negative, but Warren's Adventurer, minus 20% stress in the Warrens, which is a new zone that we haven't seen yet. Dismas got Scattering, minus 5% damage on ranged skills, considering they have a gun that doesn't seem that good, it does it. And then every mission, after you're done, you go back to the Hamlet. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Bound to them. The ruins have been unlocked. Dismas is now level one. Reynaldo is now level one, and they successfully escorted you to the hamlet. So we are now here in the hamlet. It's a rundown piece of crap, and you can kind of see the uh, the house on the hill up up here in the background. Um, but as we progress, as we do the tutorial missions, the first couple the buildings will unlock and then as we upgrade them everything will be kind of nicer we have a graveyard most will end up here covered in the poisoned earth awaiting merciful oblivion where any dead hero will go we have the ancestors memoirs in time you will know the tragic extent of my failings which shows you Everything that you can do and collect in the game, all the, the journal entries, the videos that you get to see, it's all here. So if we wanted to replay stuff that we had seen, we can replay the stuff that we've already seen. We have the Nomad Wagon. Trinkets and charms gathered from all the forgotten corners of the earth. We can buy trinkets, which give us uh, positive abilities. And the Stagecoach, recruit new heroes. Women and men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. And we were able to pick up from the stagecoach Cl Clarinel, the Plague Doctor, and Miss Nage, <laughs> the Vestal. These girls are very nice. I like both of these units. Uh, the Plague Doctor focuses highly on blight and poisoning the enemies buffing your own units with damage, speed, healing, curing. Not a, not a healer necessarily, but curing, like damage over time effects, and also has a couple of really good stun abilities. So the Plague Doctor is a unit that I really like. They do have Manslayer, better accuracy in crit versus, versus humans, and Ruins Phobe, worse stress in the Ruins. Not that good. And then the Vestal is our, our dedicated healer. They have Divine's Grace and Divine Comfort for a targeted heal and a party heal. They also have Cove Explorer, plus 10% scouting chance in the Cove, and Pluto Mania, Manic for money! Divine Comfort heals for 1 to 3? That's been buffed. I remember it being 1 to 2. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, camping skills we don't have to worry about for the time being. Uh, we have a couple of new units. Of course, they have to be uh, renamed. I know that uh, Twigbreaker wanted a name, so Twigbreaker can can be the Plague Doctor. And then I also know that Milk Jug wanted to be a Vestal. So there you go. There is your Vestal. And now there's nothing else for us to do in the town because we have to unlock the rest of the buildings, which means just do a couple of missions, complete more quests to unlock. So we're going to embark on a mission with Dismas. Mecca of madness and morbidity. Your work begins. This moss is uh, still very stressed out. The the HP will regen between missions. The stress does not. It gets maintained. So he's going to enter the next mission irrational. But that's just that just adds another kink to the mix. I kind of like it. So we're going to add the Plague Doctor and the Vestal to our four-party lineup here. 
the usual suspects. This is a very solid party minus the irrationality. And we're gonna go to the ruins, the only location we have unlocked. Darkest Dungeon is the final mission and we can't do that yet. It's a short apprentice level mission, which means that it's perfectly suited for, for you know low level party members. The goal is to explore 90% of the rooms and if we do it, we get 3000 gold, four crests, and the stun stone, which increases the stun skill of whoever's holding this trinket. Before I forget though, there's one thing I do want to do, which is to go to the stagecoach and actually upgrade it. More arrive, foolishly seeking fortune and glory in this domain. In of this the domain. And uh, I just want to get some deeds traded here so that we can upgrade the stagecoach twice. Because now we'll get four new party members next mission and then we can just kind of cycle them out a little bit here. Um, and also we just get more people and more options for, for party members. So that's the only thing I really wanted to do. Uh, we'll do the ruins. Let's go. The cost of preparedness measured now in gold. Later. In blood. In blood. And when we go out on a mission, we have to take provisions along. We get to choose what we take. We have to pay for everything. But everything has its its own usefulness. You know, torches help us keep the light up so that we can see what's going on. Food allows us to uh, uh, heal and also camp and also not starve to death. So it's probably a good idea to have some food along. <clears throat> um, we're gonna want a torch, sorry, we're gonna want a shovel rather to break down obstacles. Uh, we already have holy water, we don't need medicinal herbs. We do want, I think two keys, so we'll bring along two keys. Uh, and then, I think that's it. We could bring along bandages, but we have healer, we have someone who can cure bleed if we get bled, so I don't think we need to bring along bandages. I think we'll be fine in that regard. I think we, what we are ready to do though is ready to go. So let's go out on our mission here. Just doing a quick check. You never wanna skip the provision phase. You wanna make sure you have enough for your missions. I thought there would be dialogue, I guess not. You upgraded the stagecoach? I did upgrade the stagecoach. Honey PDW, because I, I wanna get more party members quickly so that I can actually uh, you know, have more options. I don't want to just have the Crusader and, and Dismas forever. I think that's acceptable. Okay. We're going to move to the first room of this tutorial. Because this is still the tutorial. This is a, a set layout for the mission. It's the same every time. And eventually you just, you just start to recognize everything here. Uh, so this is our first curio. Curios are interactables in the hallways or sometimes in the rooms themselves. This is just a torch. We salvaged the torch and we got a torch. Torches are important because at the top of the screen is our light level. The light level determines bonuses and penalties that we have. As the light gets darker, we get inflicted with more stress. Monsters crit more, they do more damage, they're more accurate and we're worse. So we want to keep the torch level high for the ability to dodge, scout, and have monsters being surprised instead of us. You don't have to keep the torch up though. If you want, you can go completely pitch black, which will give you more loot, a lot more loot, but it makes the game insanely more difficult, like absurdly difficult. I can't really recommend that you do a, uh, a low light run, especially if you're not like prepared for min-maxing and you're you're like trained up for it because it is ridiculous. It is actually dumb. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. A faint hope blossoms. Uh, we're just gonna kill the skeleton though. Our crusader, his smite ability does do more damage versus unholy and this guy is unholy. He's not a undead, he's just unholy. So we'll do more Continue damage against him there. Destroy them. And we have 350 gold for defeating the the two rabble skeletons. And there's a chest, an unlocked strong box. Doesn't say it's trapped. It does say it's unlocked. So I doubt a key is gonna help here. Hacks laden with loot are often low on supplies. 
We're just gonna take the shovel, the portrait, and the gold for ourselves. We need all these things. We need all the resources we can get in these missions. Especially the shovel, because this is even the cold stone. Cold seems stone. Bent on preventing passage. This is just a rubble blockade here. If we have a shovel, we can use the shovel to clear the blockade. If we don't have a shovel, we have to do it by hand. And if we do it by hand, we lose health and stress on everybody. So you want to make sure you have plenty of shovels. So we have a shovel. And then as we progress here, I should have had the torch light up a little bit more, but there's another party, enemy party here. Stressful incantation. The cultist acolyte, very annoying because they inflict stress on our units as like their primary attack. So like you, you've got the bone soldiers at the front, they do health damage, and then you have the cultist in the back that does stress damage. You gotta kind of balance, you know, which enemies you're focusing, when you're focusing on them, how you're killing them, all that good stuff. I am just going to hopefully work down this cultist acolyte though. We missed. But I want to kill her so that she doesn't, you know, give us an insane amount of stress. So I'm going to use the Plague Doctor to try to blight her with the Plague Grenade ability. Did land, and it did blight. So now she's taking four damage around for three rounds. So she's taking 12 points of damage, which is pretty good, but we would like to ideally kill her faster. The Vestal here doesn't need to do any healing, so instead they're going, going to use Dazzling, dazzling Light which is a stunning attack. So maybe we can actually stun the Cultist Acolyte. Our ability has 100% base. She has 25% resistance. That means it's 75% likely to land. Well, 78% chance of hitting, 75% chance of stunning after that. All right, well, <laughs> truly, I love thee, girl. I love thee, so true, my lady. Thanks, Dismas. Dismas is gonna be a bit of a jerk on this mission, but you know, we did it for the lulls, essentially. All right, Crusader, he cannot hit the Cultist Acolyte no matter what he does. We're just gonna smack down a zombie. It's not a zombie, it's actually a skeleton. Wrong thing. But at the very least, Dismas is very fast. So because this Bone Rabble has, has one HP, I'm gonna use his Grape Shot ability, which is a, a wide hitting ability so that we don't overkill anyone. Okay, he, had to, he has to actually land the shot though for that to work but I really wanted him to get the kill. That way he could also do damage to the other units, but obviously it didn't work out that way. Okay, so we inflicted another stack of Blight. So now the Cultist Acolyte is taking eight damage per round, including the round in which they were stunned. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they are actually dead. When they get to act, they will take eight damage and then die. So they're, they're dead. We don't have to worry about them at all. So Crusader. You're gonna use your your two target ability to hit both of the bone rabbles, or but one rabble, one soldier. Again, I just don't want to necessarily overkill one enemy by so much. You, you have her face. Why do you have her face? Oh, you just love? Dismos just loves kicking the crap out of my plague doctor for some reason. Why do you have her face? I think that's, you know, made out of like leather, not actual human skin. Although, you know, in this game, you never know for, for certain. The slow death, unforeseen, unforgiving. Got a stun? Got a stun. Although I'm pretty sure we can just honestly kill this unit. There we go. Could have done like a heal, but instead I just went for the stun instead. The, the stress is starting to get up on our other members too. Brought low and driven Ugh. into the mud. Hey, welcome, Mud. How are you doing? Long time no see. I will absolutely get you killed if I have the opportunity. You gotta tell me what character class in this game you want to be named after, though. You have to tell me if you want to be, like, a, a jester or, you know, someone who can actually do damage. <laughs> I'm not naming you Dismos because Dismos and Reynold are going to keep their names. They're going to keep their names because there's actually an achievement in the game for keeping them alive the entire thing, and I, I want to make sure I don't forget about them. So they get to stay as who's the, who they are. But if you want to be a highwayman, I'll make you a highwayman. So there's two different passages here. We could go up to a treasure or right to a curio. It doesn't really matter which we do immediately. I'm just going to go up. 
and then we'll go, uh, we'll backtrack and then go down the other path. Because I want to, you know, interact with these curios, get all the loot and whatnot. Whistles. Doo -doo 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 -doo. The pack contains loot. And he took it. So, the reason why the Crusader took the loot, what lies beyond this gilded ornament, is because he is a kleptomaniac. He's prone to stealing items. He's also god fearing and an automatomophobiac. And then he also has plus 10% damage if the torch is above, above 75, which I, I tend to try to make it. So the negative quirk kind of... The match is struck. Yeah, 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 the Blazing, Blazing Star, is, Star born. is born. So he was a kleptomaniac and he stole our items, which does happen, unfortunately. All right, so we hit the Cultus Acolyte. That was pretty good. I think if we target the Cultus Acolyte with everything, we can kill him... Ideally before they act now. I don't think we can in theory. We could have though. We could have I'm gonna go for a stun That stun ability it keeps hitting for six. That's actually like good damage But as long as we land this blight which we didn't uh, the acolyte would have been dead after one attack But instead they they might get a get a chance to do two attacks and that irrationality is starting to build up stress on everybody, but hopefully it doesn't matter in the long run. Hopefully it doesn't matter in the long run. But I do want to kill you. We have one HP! Please kill him. Thank you. Give them no quarter. Fine work, brother. Now we drink. That stressed you out? He wanted to drink with you! He's hitting on you in the middle of the dungeon. Well, okay, maybe that would stress you out. I don't know. I, I, I guess I can understand it. <laughs> um, so, the Crusader is bleeding, but it's not that much of a bleed and we can just heal it with the Vestal, so I'm just gonna let the Crusader bleed a little bit and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stab the cultist brawler at the front. Ticket, Lord, no, I'm a stowaway. Well, you know, I wish you wouldn't. Okay, so the Cultist Brawler moved, so he, he is technically dead. He's bleeding too much, he will die on his next turn, so all we need to do now is just any sort of, like, buff that we can manage. Gotta move positions here. So, you know, we're going to use, uh, I don't know, Bulwark of Faith, even though it doesn't do anything. As the light it gives us light level. We're gonna do a, a heal. It's a crit heal for eight, which is pretty good. If, I was gonna say, if the Plague Doctor moves, we can cure the bleed and put out another crit heal, which is really nice. You don't get too many crit heals, but you love it when you see it. And then, you know, our health is not that bad. Stress is starting to build up, but the health is, is okay. And we have a chest here, which we can open with a key to get additional loot. It doesn't, didn't seem like we got too much additional loot there, but you tend to get additional loot when you use keys on chests. Uh, you can use you know, poison on tree stumps. You can use uh, the holy water on an eldritch altar. You can use your your consumable items on certain curios that you find in levels and get bonus effects out of the curio. Sometimes when you interact with the curio, you get a negative thing. Like if there's a display case and you break it open or try to open it, it could poison you. But if you use a key, you can just open it for free. So there is a reason to use all of your your shovels and anti-venoms and holy waters and skeleton keys so that you can get a little bit of a benefit out of the curio. Guaranteed benefits, rather. There's a curio right here, a little bit of a, a holy fountain. You, you have her face, why do you have her face? You love you love hitting the, the women, don't you? I don't know why. We gotta, we gotta work on that. Um, Bone Soldier, do we want a grape shot blast? or just open vein for three to seven, or pistol shot for four to eight with a crit chance. Feel like maybe just doing, well, okay, it doesn't matter. You know what, you can try to keep plaguing the back line. It did work, thank you for the poison. Fredakla says, waste all of your good RNG early so the occultists can give you a zero heal with the bleed. I mean, we're not really getting rid of too much RNG this early, you know? It's the first level. And we're not doing a run of zero light, so 
I expect us all to live, ideally. But yes, the crit heals are pretty good. <laughs> okay, you're stunned. You're not dead, Bone Arbalist, but you're getting there. And they're just, they're just attacking me randomly. The hero dies in vain, a sound trade for a touch of fame. Pass, you passed your turn. I don't need you, Dismas. Not until you get, you know, a little bit better. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do a sweet party heal because it can heal for three. It didn't, but it could. In general, the party heal is more valuable if everyone's wounded because you, you can get a higher roll. You know, instead of healing for six, you could heal for 12, I guess, if you hit three on everybody. So you, you can heal for more. Obviously we didn't, but we could have. Fine work, brother, now we drink. Stop stressing everyone out with the drinks. So now this is a, another good kind of party heal opportunity. Although the Plague Doctor is getting a bit a bit low on health, we could give them a, a nice little targeted uh, heal if we want, but if we do two turns of party heals, it's probably gonna pay for itself. All right, so you're dead. Now, you're stunned? That's a, that's a buff, that's a heal. I probably can't kill the Bone Soldier at the front. Are we gonna kill the Bone Soldier in the second position? We can try. Yeah, I know they were stunned, but we can just stun the guy in the front here and then have time to do a heal. I am tempted to do a, a targeted heal though on the Plague Doctor, because they are real low. But, like, why not do the party heal? Okay, <laughs> I guess that's why you don't always roll party heal. You can just heal yourself by one. Because I think we can kill a Bone Soldier with anybody. There you go. And we got Holy Water, Crests, and Citrine. The gems are just something you can sell. It's, you don't actually sell it, it's just, it's gold. Sorry, excuse me, had a cough. It's sold automatically, you don't have to do anything with it. It's just money, it's another form of money. So there is a uh, an altar here, a holy fountain, an ornate fountain of holy purport. Uh, we can let the plague doctor interact with it, or we could use a interaction item on this. We could use a torch, a shovel, a key, anti-venom, or holy water. It's a holy fountain. What happens if we use holy water on the holy fountain? Divine benefit. A heal and stress relief, and then stress, <laughs> thanks to Dismas. But that's the power of using items on curios. If, if you either A, know what you're doing, or B, get lucky, or C, experiment, you know, you can get some nice payouts on those every once in a while. Okay, and now, in this hallway here, we have a trap. Out of everybody, our highwayman has the best chance of disarming the trap. It's better that he tries that rather than the trap just go off in our face and hurt us. So, there we go. Okay. And then, we don't need to go down this hallway. I actually know what's here. There's a trap there, and that's it. We're gonna go to the right instead. The pack contains loot. A couple of charms. Blight amulet, plus 20% blight skill chance, plus 20% Blight Resist, minus 20% Bleed Resist. You know what? It's actually really good on the Plague Doctor because they have a Blight skill, and it's really nice if that has a plus 20% chance of applying. And now instead of, you know, 80% chance, it's 100%. Instead of 75%, it's 95%. So that seems like a pretty good one to have. And uh, everything else I'm just gonna take. We could put the Disease Charm on somebody, but it also comes with a minus two dodge, and I guess we'll do that. Everyone has at least two dodge because of the torchlight. So yeah, I don't really wanna lower someone's dodge down to zero. So let's just say no to that one. And then we have here a, uh, a hunger check. Randomly you'll get these in dungeons. You can't predict them. This is the only guaranteed one because this is still a tutorial level. But if you have food, you can just eat food to regain a little bit of health. If you don't have food, you starve, and everyone takes health damage and stress damage. So you always want to have food for this. It 
starving is very unfortunate and you would rather not have that happen. So we've completed the quest, but I'm gonna continue adventuring. The quest was only to explore 90% of rooms, which ended up being all but one. But there is one more room left. Oh, hey, we got scouting on the trap room. Uh, there is one more room left. It's a room battle with treasure. We might as well do it because we have the technology, we have the power, we have the resources, and we're right here. So we're gonna go off in this direction. This is why I brought the, the shovel at the very beginning. And this is the last room. And if this is the, the le is yeah, 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 yeah. He likes talking about torches. Require only the strength to follow it. If this is the last room, I'm going to eat to get up to full health on everybody. We still have a stack of food, but we can, if we don't use this food, we can bring it back with us in order to get a little bit of a, a refund. But we might as well get full health on everything and then go into the next room. And we know that there's gonna be combat in here because every room that has something in it is combat. So we surprise the enemies. There is a bone defender, he's got a shield. A bone soldier, he's got a sword. The bone courtier, who is another stress enemy. And then the bone arbalist in the very back who has the, the arbalist, the crossbow. Is that an arbalist? What is an arbalist? I don't know. In any case, I would like to focus the stress guy down because we have full health, but not full stress protection. So I'm gonna try my best. That's a great crit. <laughs> to kill him, and with him having one HP, in theory, the Plague Doctor can actually kill him with the, the grenade itself. Not even the blighting, just the physical blunt force trauma of a packet of poisonous gas in the face of the skeleton. Okay, he dodged, but in theory it could have happened. Insane giggling. That wouldn't really make me that stressed out, I think. Um, we're gonna try the Vestal kill then. There we go, okay. So at least we got him. Because the enemy is stressed, we all get to move first. And, you know, we didn't get to stun any other unit with the, the Vestal, but that's still okay. We got the kill anyways. Quarrel. I got a quarrel with you. Shh, I see more of them hiding on the brothel balcony. There is a brothel, but it's not here in the dungeon. I don't know what you're talking about, Dismas. Thank you, but no, I have already eaten this morning. This is, yeah, gasp, this is the negative of having someone with an affliction. You tend not to want to have afflictions on your team. He just made my crusader hopeless. There can be no hope in this hell. No hope at all. Well, hopefully there's a little hope. Definitely annoying, uh, we can, we can, we can deal with that though. This is the last combat. Okay, the crits are actually like beautiful though. Um, and we're not gonna be taking these people along for the next mission anyway, so we can afford to have them be a little bit stressed out and we can just deal with it. But this is why you don't wanna have afflictions. You want to be able to manage your stress so that you don't get yourself into this position to begin with. Axe blade. We are not taking that much damage at all. The Vestal's having a hard time being useful because they keep missing their stuns. But at least, you know, the Vestal did get the kill on the uh, on the Bone Courtier, so that's not too bad. Fine work, brother, now we drink. Why does that stress you out? I would love to have a drink right about now. Well, with only one unit who has high protection, 25% protection, all we can really do is just Leave me alone, the others need aid more, aid more than I. <laughs> he is hopeless. It, what's cool about the uh, the affliction system is that they all do different things. Hopeless, he didn't want the healing. He's like, no, don't give it to me. You know, he's acting hopeless. Dismas is acting irrational, not only with what he's saying, but he's hurting his own people sometimes. It is a very cool mechanic. Fine work, brother, now we drink. But I don't understand why drinking is so seen with such negativeness in this location. What terrible strength. We did get stunned and knocked back by the Bone Defender, but you know what? Two can play that game. There's not much. Well, you know, I could buff the damage and speed of the Crusader. The Plague Doctor does have a buffing ability, or we could just hit him because he has eight HP remaining or we can just miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's gonna get stressed out. But in theory, we can just, 
Nice. We can just, you know, hit him a few times and he'll be dead. So let's hope that we can do that. Will alone cannot slow the setting sun, so why try? You buffed yourself. <laughs> so he's hopeless. Is Did he buff himself because he's hopeless or did he just use a random, random ability? You marked yourself. He's almost dead. Finally, the Plague Doctor didn't miss. Oh, I forgot to... Oh, I did it! <laughs> may indeed stalk these shadows, but yonder... Snuffed out the torch. Why snuff out the torch? Just in case you can get some additional loot, because you do get plus, plus, plus loot. So we're gonna open up this chest and uh, hope that we can get some additional things out of it. One jade. Get rid of one anti-venom. All right. Quest complete, let's get out of here. But nothing from the narrator, fine. We picked up 4,000 gold from the mission, plus 3,000, a whole bunch of heirlooms, plus some heirlooms, and a stun skill, or stun stone for the stun skill. People have leveled up, people are hopeless, and we also get new quirks on three people. Guilty conscience bears the crushing guilt of deeds real and imagined, and photomania, negative stress if the torch is high. I like it. Faithless will not pray or flagellate for stress relief. Not really that much of a problem. Automatomophobia and weld tactician plus 15% damage in the weld. Location specific buffs I don't really care that much about, especially when it's damage on a healer. The tents are pitched, banners fly, and the corpse wagons stand at the ready. The circus, the circus has, has come, come to, to town. town. This is the one of the DLC bits. I actually don't think I installed it because I don't plan on doing PvP um, for the Butcher's Circus, but it is there. And people have leveled up and they were successful in exploring the ruins, even though they were a little bit insane. But now we, uh, let me just, there we go, click on that. Now we have access to the tavern and the abbey, which we can use for stress relief. Let me just get rid of the exclamation marks real quick. <laughs> The Abbey calls to the faithful. So now we can relieve the stress Fresh cakes, of our people. Cards, okay, and tell me about the tavern a little bit more. Come on. To the weary and broken alike. So Reynald, he has a quirk, God-fearing, will only pray. So he has to go in, in for prayer. Dismas can go to flagellate. He, he's a known cheat. He cannot gamble, but he can flagellate. Milk Jug, Manic for Money, Stress versus Humans, nothing really matters what we do here. Uh, could have you do this, and then these guys can just go into the tavern. So let me uh, let me unequip your trinket. Where's, where's trinkets, this one? Unequip trinkets, thank you. Uh, Plague Doctor can gamble and then Dismas can go to the brothel. And then they're gonna get stress treatment, thank you very much. And then we can go to the stagecoach, and oh hey look, four new heroes. An occultist, to two grave robbers, this, and a bounty hunter. Know it. I don't like using two of the same person on a mission, but I'm gonna do it here just because it's what the game gave me. <laughs> We're gonna have two grave robbers on the mission. Uh, occultists have a healing ability that has a negative. You could accidentally bleed your fellow man, but and they also have abilities that are good against Eldritch or Eldritch related themselves. Hands from the Abyss, stunning attack. It's pretty good. Grave robbers have a lot of kind of movement abilities plus thrown daggers and uh, poisoning. Bounty hunter, very good against humans, very good against marked targets. Finish him, more damage on the stunned target. Flashbang, come hither. They move around the enemy position, inflict a lot of stuns, can do a lot of damage, can mark targets and whatnot. Uh, and they also have all of their own quirks, like off guard, negative speed and dodge on the first round. That seems awful. Slow draw, minus four speed, clumsy, minus five dodge. Ah, but musical, more stress healing received. Ah, oh, nice. Great. <laughs> um. And that's about it, you know, we're going to do another mission here in the ruins. Uh, the only op, well, I guess we do have the option for a medium length mission, which would probably be better. You know, the, the 
longer the mission, the longer the mission, but also the more opportunities you have to gain loot and then come back with more money. Yeah, so that does seem like pretty good. Uh, there's no real trinket rewards that I care about. I mean, this one is, is purely positive, bounty hunter only. But uh, plus eight dodge, that's pretty, that's like an okay one. We'll probably just go here just because it is a medium length mission. And really the only party layout that works is, is this. <laughs> the only question is, Who's going to be in what position here? And I think the answer is it doesn't really matter because they all have essentially the same abilities on the grave robbers. So that's a little unfortunate. Actually, the uh, occultist might want to be in the back line now that I think about it. Yeah, I'll probably, probably do it like this just because that way the occultist has access to the sacrificial stab from the second position or third position rather. But regardless, it's Darkest Dungeon. For those of you on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, check me out on Twitch. For when I go live, support me on Twitch, Patreon, and Streamlabs, and I hope to see you here again for the next mission in the Darkest Dungeon.